Welcome to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins here with John Merrill. John, uh, it's a great day here in Alabama. How you doing, buddy? Always good to be with you, good my friend. Good to see you, man. At, uh, I always ask you where you're coming from because you're a traveling man. They, Ricky Nelson had a song about you, a traveling man. You remember That's that right. song? Yes, sir. I, I'll tell you a Ricky Nelson story after we get over the area. It ain't nothing bad. It's just we got time for it. we got a lot of stuff to talk about here. Uh, let me see. Where are we? Oh, would you have ever guessed in your world, you've been in politics, would you ever thought you'd see a Kennedy standing next to a Republican? Supporting him, uh, not a common, not a common from, thing. From that brute, from yes, the sir. JFKs and uh, yes, sir, Robert F. Of course, you know this is another thing that you have to remember is that the Kennedys that many of us know and admire, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, his brother Joseph Patrick Kennedy, who was killed in World War II. Um, Senator Robert Francis Kennedy, who was the Attorney General and also a United States Senator from New York. Those are not the Kennedys that we see today. Those are not the Kennedys that have the same thought process. They don't have the same philosophy. They sure don't have the same morals and they say they don't have the same values that those people had then. So let me just say this. The Kennedys and the politics that they had back in the 1950s and the 1960s uh, many of those individuals would be looked at as Republicans today, and many of them would be looked at as conservatives, especially their positions on military issues as well as fiscal responsibility. But that's not where we are today with those Kennedys that you're referring to. Yeah, it was a big day with Jackie O and all that bunch, but that was that's surprising when you see that picture of Robert K. Jr. Uh, Robert K. Kennedy Jr. And see, his dad was assassinated. That's right. His uncle was assassinated. That's but right. they wouldn't give him Secret Service protection. That's right. Until uh, Trump was shot. Exactly. Then they decided, oh, we better That's do right. this. Yeah. And I met Robert Kennedy Jr. Yeah. in Milwaukee. He was at the Republican convention. He was not at the convention site when I met him. That was not where we spent the time that we visited together. It was at a hotel away from the convention site. But that was uh, a real treat for me to be yeah. able to interact with him and to talk to him about some of the things that were important to him. He's a envir big environmentalist. And I was the environmental coordinator for Anna Snarva Depot. And I went to the Washingtonian, you know where that's at? Yes, sir. And met with uh, with a bunch of others, and, and uh, he was the head of it. Uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. was the head of it, and that's when I first met him. And we had had a situation, a technical situation, where some material had went from one chemical vat to another chemical vat, and then to the another chemical vat, and was captured. Never went off the depot never went in the ground it was always captured but when you do something like that you still have to notate it well when it gets notated you notice it's a violation of your operations when you have something that escaped from a chemical vat even though it didn't harm anything uh, so we were served notice that there might be a problem with that because ADEM had, a, had it annotated so these people go all over the United States, the different environmental agencies in the state, find out who violated a water deal or whatever, and then they go back and file lawsuits against them because the states don't always do it. So they will go ahead and do that. So in this case, I sit, we had lunch, I sit across the table from Bobby Kennedy Jr. And I told him the story from Aniston. He said, oh, oh, we know that. We know all about that. And, and, and we, everybody did like Aniston at Depot. We said, so, and two weeks later, we got a lawsuit, $40,000 from Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> I came back and told our attorneys, don't worry about it. I handled it. I sat there and talked with the man myself, and he promised me. That little scoundrel. I would, <laughs> I would knock him off that state. No, he's... Uh, <laughs> He, he let me down. But you was, we were talking about, uh, you, you, in that thing we were talking about with Harris, I go, said, they never did ask that question, are you better off now? Than you were four years let ago. Me, let me tell you something happened to me. I, I'm a creature of habits. I buy the same cereal I, today that I did five years ago. 
I can't imagine that. <laughs> well, you, you got me loaded. Uh, I bought a, the, the huge box of cere- Cheerios. Huge box. The manly kind. Right. $4.43, the most I ever paid for it. I went into Publix the other day, $7.17. It was on sale. <laughs> yeah. The other way around. But they said, and, and you know what, what I did? I checked with them. I get the manager. I was like, why is this? And also, I had three other things that I was there for. I had went out of crazy, uh, priced high, including my eggs. But I said, tell me why my cereal went up. He brought out a bill of lading, showed me what he paid for Cheerios to be shipped in two, three years ago. He said, here they are, but I said, I have to do this a lot. I said, you're not the only one. He said, look what I paid Roadway Express to haul this in here. $9 a pallet. It's $23 a pallet today because of the gas costs. Gas has drove everything up. So when they say that that gas prices, oil prices didn't have something to do, it, it's still affecting us today what happened three years ago when you're talking about a dollar. Of course it is, and that's why we needed to open the XL pipeline, and that's why we want your pipeline to be direct to Brainstorming TV. For this week's episode, the 72nd episode, we're going to take a break now. We'll come right back and join us for the second segment. Welcome back to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins here with John Merrill. Hey, John, we, I, I guess the folks I think I'm not going to get over this uh, uh, debate last night, but there was another thing that was uh, a missed opportunity. Trump did not use the part about the tips. Now, the people that watch us, a lot of them are in service jobs here in our restaurants and stuff. Sure. From where we're taping today, across the streets, probably 15 top restaurants. And all those ladies that work over there, and guys, uh, that that uh, work for tips. They don't get but two, what, $2 an hour or something like that. And uh, is anybody in the audience that knows? Nobody really knows. But he yeah, about $2 an hour. And then the rest of the money they make is off the tips, but to pay taxes on it. So Trump, first one that came out, said, I'm going to make sure you don't pay taxes on your tips. Well, guess what Harris did? First thing she did, first, uh, the first, and I'm talking about the first plan she came out with was no tax on tips. I mean, that blatantly just jumped right and copied what he did. And just like Trump was telling her last night, she copied from Biden's old speech, what she's saying last night. Uh, yeah, that's not unusual for that to happen, because they're locked at the hips. But uh, I, I just thought he missed a good opportunity because he did say that uh, he was going to stop the the taxes on tips. And, uh, well, that's why it's so important for him to stay on point with those economic issues that are so very important to each and every family across our country because that's where the real kitchen table issues are and that's why he needs to talk about those things that are significant to the everyday American. When you're able to do that effectively, you can convince people where you are. Offering a opportunity for people who are working like dogs for a living each and every day, like the people that wait tables and the people that cook and the people that are in the food service area. Those individuals need every break they can get. And having an opportunity to remove the tax component from that enables them to be more efficient and effective at their jobs when it comes to providing for their families. And that's what we want. And that was a golden opportunity that was missed in the first debate. Yeah. I ask, uh, I ask the waitresses a lot of times, what's your story? Uh, what do you do? Why are you working here? And this kind of thing. Uh, don't want to get too in it because it has a lot to do with the way I tip. If a woman says, I'm a single mother, I'm doing something. But 90%, and I say 90%, that's the figure I come up with, most of the, the waitresses have a situation that is really, uh, you need to ask them what's going on with them because you'll find out that they are there not by choice. 
they, you very seldom you'll find somebody working at a nice restaurant that are there just because they wanted to work at the restaurant. They are there because they got to pay the bills. They got a kid that needs this or that. And a lot of them are single parents, like I said. And you I did that and I tip accordingly. If, if I, someone tells me, I got a story, I asked one Cracker Barrel the other day, she about had me crying. She started telling me her stuff. Of course, she got a bigger tip. I guarantee you she got a bigger tip. Because not only did I tip her, but my daughter was reaching to her purse trying to find some money. And I said, what were you going to put in there? She told me, and I said, I put it in for her. Uh, so this is, you never know what somebody's going through, but these, that tip thing was not so lightly. That was going to affect a lot of people. That, uh, for various reasons, they're out there having to, having to work at these, these kinds of places. But you know what? I was sitting there at one place, and a little thing come running toward me. And do, 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 a robot. It comes and delivers your order. You take it off, and it do, 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 goes right back. It don't go, do, 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 but it goes back and makes right. a little sound. But but I'm saying this is the future. This thing exactly. They send it from the And then those kitchen. people will be put out of business. Yeah, and I didn't know its name. I didn't know what the R two D two. I didn't have it. I mean, we didn't have any discussion at all. It just brought me my stuff and left. It's like very cold, like. I mean, I, but I got what I ordered. Right. And I got it in a timely fashion. It ran around everybody in that place. Boop, 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 boop. Moving sideways all over. Place was really crowded, and it was having to duck and dodge. But it got to me with my order. And I reached in and got it. And it went back and didn't say thank you, kissed my foot, whatever. Just, That's right. It does something. But you didn't have to leave a tip either. What does that mean we're headed for? You <laughs> think? No, I didn't leave a tip either. Thank you. I didn't think that's about what that. artificial intelligence is yeah. all about. <laughs> you don't have to tip. I didn't think about that. But that's yeah. I'd be glad to see that thing next time. <laughs> uh, we had. Did you see where in Memphis there was a guy that was going to kill? Let's say he was going to kill uh, Biden, Obama, and Harris. Did you see that one? I that did not. That kind of slipped off the radar. They mentioned it on Fox News and covered it for a day, and then it just went away. I don't know what happened to it, but. But they, it wasn't just Trump. That was right after Trump was shot. But uh, they, uh, that, that thing was a shot heard around the world. That was, even though he got his ear, you noticed he was looking up straight to the audience like this. And he turned to look up at a screen and show some illegals crossing the border. And when he looked up at the screen, he looked up where, where the bullet would have been coming straight at him. He looked away. It came this way. He's, he said it was divine intervention. I guess it, who can argue that? But he, just a little twitch, and it, he'd be a dead man. I mean, it was the bullet was strong enough and powerful enough to just went right into his temple. And in this case, it, because he had turned his head to look up at that screen, about the people crossing the border. And uh, that was uh, quite a deal. Well, we certainly hope you don't turn your head away from your television to complete this week's episode of Brainstorm in America. We'll be back right after this last break for the third segment of this week's show. Welcome back to Brainstorm in America. Ken Rollins here, and we're talking with John Merrill, and we're talking about the current events that you need to know about from our perspective. And that's what we're doing. We're giving you the in-depth of what's going on in the world. I want to go back to a uh, hot spot that we got going on, John. Uh, the Hezbollah, all the situation in Iraq, uh, in, Iraq in Israel, is as I came to the show today, uh, they're acting up. They still got our hostages there. And we got Kamala Harris last night trying to tell Israel how to fight their war. Now, they they were attacked on October 7th, Israel. Imagine if that had been the United States and then somebody's telling us, France or somebody's trying to tell us how we should handle that. We go in with guns a-blazing, so to speak, and they tell us, oh, no, 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 no. 
you don't need to shoot real bullets. We want to rubber bullets. You need to do, you need to back off. You know, how would that feel to us? But that's exactly what they're doing to Israel. Uh, Netanyahu is more familiar with what he's up against than we'd ever think. Absolutely, and he's prepared, and he will not relent until he has claimed victory for the Israelis and the Israeli people. And that's what you expect from the leader of one of the greatest countries in the history of the world. And that's where Benjamin Netanyahu is. I think one of the other things that kind of got laid aside in that debate was when President Trump said that he told Abdul, who was one of the leaders of the Afghanistan, uh, the the group, Taliban. The, the Taliban group in Afghanistan, that um, here's a picture of your house, and he said, why do you keep showing me a picture of your house? Well, that's pretty clear because that's the next thing that's going to get blown up. That's the reason that he showed him. That's the reason he kept bringing it up to him. And then they quit trying to promote that activity, and they quit trying to engage in a war-type behavior because of that, because he understood what was at stake. Himself, his family, his home, and he didn't want to put that all at risk. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have absolutely no intentions to ever do that to anybody, which is one of the reasons why the United States is the laughing stock of the world when it comes to protecting ourselves and protecting those that support us. One of the the president's people, and I want to say it's Pompeo, stated that when that conversation took place between Abdul of the Taliban and Trump, he was in the White House when that took place. And he said Trump told Abdul if one American, we're pulling out, if one American's hair on his head is harmed, you're going to regret it. And at that time, he said, show it to him. And he told whoever to put that picture of his house up there, of Abdul's house. And it was an indication of, here's a picture of your house. I'm in Washington, D.C. Here's a picture of your house. Guess what's going to happen if you harm the first why would you, else would you have a picture of his house? So he did not play or mince words. Trump didn't. And, you know, they don't, he didn't say anything about North Korea. I remember when he went to the office and he was saying, this rocket, they call him Rocket Man, little Rocket right. Man. Okay, we had Hawaii, everybody digging holes, just hide, this is going to happen. He's going to blow us up. Uh, Japan, same thing. Trump said anybody ever talk to him, and nobody ever talked to North Korea. Well, why not, basically? You know, Trump don't believe that he, hell is hot when he can do business with somebody. That's right. So he, they set up that meeting on some island, some of you remember when they first met, and it was cordial, and they, they had their first meeting. Then Trump goes back to the DMZ, to the line where nobody's ever crossed in America. If you did, you got shot. At the DMC, the parallel, 38th parallel between North and South Korea, Trump not only went there, and a lot of them have presidents that have stood on the other side with binoculars and looked at it. Ronald Reagan, George Bush, all of them looked at it in binoculars and see the North Koreans. Nobody ever walked over there where they're at, except Donald Trump. He now he walked up there to that line. Him and the head of North Korea walked over into North Korea unheard of, just unheard of. And then came back across, and North Korea came back across to the South Korea side and met with a South Korean president in a building. And never have anybody seen anything like that. We didn't have one more missile shot during Trump's deal. No more threats. Hawaii went back, quit building their bunkers. Japan quit building their bunkers. Everybody felt he, he made us safe. And and it, I can't deny that. I mean, that's not that's undeniable. There's no we've not heard from him until Biden got in there and he started firing rockets again. Little rocket man, it is. But I, Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un, yes sir. But that that thing over to Israel, Trump said it would have never happened without me. But that was Iran was behind that uh, Hamas. First of all, Hamas wouldn't have had the money unless Iran gave it to them to do all they've done, to what they're doing today, right. coming from Iran. 
Trump had broke Iran where they really didn't have anything hardly. He had, he had so many sanctions against them, they couldn't even get to the service station to get gas for their car. He was in bad shape. And the people were uprising. The Iranian people were upset because they were hard to buy bread like it is here, at, you know, during the snow season. So uh, it was it was a bad time, but but they failed to give Trump. That's the reason I support him because I like being safe from these foreign. And I tell you, if I was a head of China, one of these, I would be afraid to take on Trump because I just don't know what he might do. Uh, I can predict Biden. You know, we'll call a meeting and we'll raise a flag or we'll do we'll a toss a coin uh, with Trump. You ain't know that gonna work. I mean, somebody dog has gonna get blown up, you know. And if I think about the eating dogs. That was a national story. I had read it before Trump said it, and I was hoping that he would bring that up because I wanted him to tag it with the Venezuelans taking over those apartment complexes. I wanted him to say, and be careful about your little dogs because they will eat them. You know, in Vietnam, we took over a bunch of big German shepherds to snoop out the enemy. Man, that was like T-bone. They had never seen a dog as big as German shepherd. All they seen is a little chihuahua-like dog. Where dogs kept missing. We, Fort Benning had about 16 dogs in, in a week. We only had three left. They died eight all of our big dogs. Them dogs had big ham, big T-bone legs on them, and they killed all of our dogs. Well, we're going to help you protect your dogs. <laughs> we want you to come back and join us next week, but we're thankful that you were here for the 70 second episode of Brainstorming America. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.